Okay, preparation and dispensing. MPSF recommends the pharmacy reviews all medication orders. Pharmacy oversees the preparation of medications. All medications are labeled. That we use barcode whenever possible, and that, that we have a pharmacy available 24 hours. My understanding is that all the hospitals here have inpatient support 24 hours, right? So you know we have pharmacies in house for the most part, but uh, NQSF, I mean NQF, and also um, um, Joint Commission they recognize that some hospitals don't have 24-hour inpatient service, so they recommend and Joint Commission requires that there is a pharmacist uh, uh, available. All right, so what are the Joint Commission challenges with preparing and uh, uh, di dispensing medications? Th there's some exceptions to the policy. Uh, so obviously we want pharmacy to review all the orders, but there's some exceptions. One is when the LIP is present at the bedside, and, and at that point you can bypass pharmacy re review if the LIP controls the ordering, preparation, and dispensing and administration of the medication, also when there is an urgent situation. But then, after the implementation of this requirement, a couple more requ uh, exceptions came about. For example, in the ED, the, the LIP doesn't have to be at the bedside. He, he has to be in the immediate area. And then in the re radiology department, uh, the radiology community challenged the Joint Commission uh, and, and, and made recommendations, and uh, the Joint Commission changed their stance and, and uh, implemented an exception where if you have a protocol-based screening tool being used in the radiology department, that you can bypass pharmacy review. I was at a survey recently where they had a very nice uh, screening tool, and uh, the clerk would give it to the patient. Patient would fill out the screening tool. Patient gave it back to the clerk, and the clerk would hand the, hand the oral conscious media to the patient. So an observation was, well, you have a good screening tool, so check, can you comply with that? But who is screening the tool? Who's screening the information on the tool? The clerk in the front desk? You know, that's what it seems like. Because she's the one dispensing the contract media, or he. And they said, OK, got it. So they, they, they uh, redefined their, their process. So now they have uh, one of the uh, uh, technicians or the radiologist reviewing the, the screening tool. So even if you have a protocol-based screening tool, look at the, the, the requirements, make sure that you comply with that. Automated cabinets, we talked about that. Minimize overrides. Joint Commission is keen on overrides. What is an override? Override is when the physician writes an order, the order is sent to pharmacy, but I need the order now, so I can't wait for pharmacy, so I'm going to go to the cabinet and pull it out before pharmacy reviews the order. That's basically what an override is. So in essence, we're bypassing pharmacy review by uh, c doing an override. Now, there's been a lot of debate about overrides, and there is acceptable medications where overrides uh, are appropriate. And that it, the facility needs to determine you know, which those medications are and run it by the PNT committee or other uh, bodies, multidiscipline bodies, to approve it. And you can have a, acceptable override medications. Now, for those, do you have a, a good quality assurance process to make sure that uh, for those overrides, those medications are appropriately review, maybe double check uh, before the medication is given to the patient. Look at the appropriate review of an order, and this is defined by the Joint Commission. When you look at the EPs under these standards, EPs 4 to 9, I, I believe it is, uh, defines what an appropriate review of an order is. So when you think of an override, you may want to think, okay, what are we doing? Are we doing the five rights when we do an override, or are we looking a little further than the five rights, and are we looking at everything that we're supposed to be looking at before we give the medication to the patient. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if we're bypassing pharmacy review, are we looking at all of these aspects that uh, Joint Commission uh, defines as an appropriate uh, <laughs> pharmacy review? You know, so, so you might want to look at that. Joint Commission requires that all medications are prepared by pharmacy, but there are a few exceptions. There are medications that have poor stability, so those are typically prepared in the floor. Uh, and then there may be some urgent situations where medication may need be, to be prepared in the floor. Now, uh, one of the recommendations is to go through the cabinets and look at medications that need to be prepared. Like, let's say you have ANSA, an ANSA vial. Well, that needs to be prepared, right? Well, you need to remove that and then maybe use the connectors so you connect the ANSA and the, the fluids so it's an easy activation process instead of having to put diluent in there, mix, draw, and all that stuff. So. Look at the medications that you keep in the, in the cabinets and remove those non-urgent medications that need to be prepared and then provide them in a ready-to-administer, ready-to-use form 
to, to help the nursing staff with that. Also, uh, is there a functional area for preparing medications in the, in the patient care area? Or are the medications being prepared next to the coffee maker and the, and the cookies, you know? Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you have a clean functional area to prepare medications. Now, for those very few exceptions that where the medications will be prepared in the patient care area, I'd like to point folks to, uh, uh, to the USP Chapter 797 recommendations for immediate, immediate use compounding. So in those areas that you allow for medication preparation, which should be few, um, look at the, the, what USP Chapter 797 recommends for immediate use rec uh, compounding. And, uh, and, and you can use this for competency and for training the staff. For example, uh, only prepare medications for emergent uh, use or situations that would delay risk or improve, uh, that delays would result in risk. That is a simple transfer of medications, no more than three medications, the three uh, products. <laughs> that the continuous process doesn't take more than an hour. That uh, a septic technique is used, so if they don't know what a septic techni technique is, then you can do an in-service and, and uh, help improve the uh, quality of that technique. That the preparation process, uh, the administration of the medication occurs less than an hour, and if not, that the medication is discarded, that it's properly labeled if it is not uh, administered immediately, and then that there's no uh, batching of, uh, of compounding. Like, for example, you don't want them to be compounding a lot of medication to be used over the course of the day. If you're going to prepare something, it's to be used right away. So these are the USP Chapter 797 recommendations for immediate use compounding. And I'd like to use that to educate the staff that will be involved in those very few occasions where medications will be prepared in the floor. OK, but the key is to maximize the ready to administer products. That's the key in there. All right, uh, labeling, the, 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 the big thing here with labeling is that if you draw a medication and you put it down and there is a break in the process, you need to label the medication. So if you draw a medication up and you go straight to the patient and administer it, uh, you don't have to label it. Um, so that, that's the, the, the recommendation from uh, of the requirement from the Joint Commission. Uh, I mentioned that there was a national patient safety goal that addresses labeling, and that's specifically for the perioperative areas. And uh, in that particular requirement, in the OR, typically we see staff doing a pretty good job at labeling, but the main problem is in the procedural areas, like the GI lab, the bronchoscopy, the, the cath lab and, 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 and some of those areas. So those are the areas that we need to kind of keep an eye on or uh, assess. Medication administration, uh, NQF recommends the use of med, uh, uh, technology for medication administration like the smart pumps. But as Mary mentioned, there are other problems that come with the use of smart pumps. So do we have a multidiscipline team looking at the smart pump and looking at the drug libraries? Uh, are the drug libraries clearly defined uh, and, and, and uh, incorporated into the, the smart pump. Without a good drug library, the smart pump is really not that smart, actually. Um, the far rights, uh, recognizing that that is not, you know, not enough, uh, that there are other things that we need to uh, address and actually you know, pointed that out with the Joint Commission definition of a review of an order. And then uh, the, the following the procedural rules, and this is actually kind of related to just culture, if you will. Um, you know, that, that, that we follow, the, the duty to follow the procedural rules like, uh, you know, do we borrow medication from this patient to give it to this other patient because I haven't got the medication from that patient. You know, the, the procedural rule is not to do that. So do we do that? Because we want to take care of the patient so quickly that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, don't follow the, the, the rules that, that are in place. 